And when you look at his performance now, it's inconceivable to think of anybody else playing that role other than him. I mean, he's just perfect in it. When you are in the fight scene at the top of the Cliffs, Cliffs of Insanity, and you have to sword fight, yes. I've always found it amazing that it was clearly you guys sword fighting. <laughs> but in you. the book, yes. you say that there it's we should perhaps be even a little more amazed because of your foot and because of changes at the last minute. Yes. First of all, I broke my toe fooling around on Andre the Giant's all-terrain vehicle, which I had no business being on, but he kept taunting me to try it. And I <laughs> eventually, uh, you know, when a, when a giant tells you he should try his toy... You do. ...several times a day, <laughs> yeah. at some point, you, you need to relent. Anyway... I wait, 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 wait. Before you get to the sword fight scene, just talk. I, I just have to verify. He never actually was riding. I love the way I love the way you say that you walked on the set and you saw him on top of the horse and you realized this is the craziest job in the world. In the world. He never actually rode the horse. No, he was always on wires. Never touched. The horse would never allow. The horses are very smart. The horse took one look at Andre, all 460 pounds, seven foot five of him, and, and just said, there's no, and this was a Clydesdale. This is the kind you see on the Budweiser commercial. Yeah. The biggest horse ever. And it just refused. So they had to blindfold it and then lower Andre down on a wire and not actually touching the horse. Is um, that crazy? He, huh? That's crazy. Crazy. Anyway, so I broke my toe fooling around on this all-terrain vehicle. And luckily, it, it, it was fairly reasonably well healed. By this. It was three weeks later after we, uh, that that I, we shot the sword fight. But when we came to show it to Rob Reiner, we, Mandy and I had become so fast at the routine that it, it clocked in at about a minute. And Rob turned to us and went, guys, you've got to go back and add another two minutes. You know, this whole, look at this set I built for you, this beautiful set. You, you can't be in here for just a minute. So we had, with literally four or five days to go, we had to go back and add another two minutes to the fight, which we did. And uh, we now added you've just told this acrobatic us. piece. Where we, where we had this gymnast come in and do this wonderful flip on the bars, and it was, it was fun. Now, I was going to say, he obviously carries a great storyteller. He just he butchered that. It's great in the book. <laughs> it's great in the book. Okay. Um, so, Carrie, uh, you are, um, and I don't, I, I'm let you decide on whether you want to tell this or leave it for the reader to discover. But when you get to the end of the book, you yeah. talk about Peter Falk and yeah. that really touching scene between a grandfather and his grandson. Yeah and how that became real. Do you care to go into that at all? Sure. I lost my own grandfather during the making of the film, and my grandfather was the hero in my life. He was a real-life World War II veteran. He had uh, been sort of like a, a commando. He worked for Special Operations Executive, SOE, and their job was to be flown behind enemy lines and create a fifth column to fight the, the Germans and the Italians in, in Albania and, and in many other places. Anyway, he died of, of complications uh, related to diabetes, and uh, uh, he was the kind of guy who used to tell tales to me as a kid, much like Peter Falk did but with Fred Savage. And when I went to the hospital after I wrapped the movie, I started to share with him because he was unable to come to the set. He was too sick. I shared with him the whole story of, of my experience making the film. And he was under a lot of medication at the time. I don't know how much he really could understand what I was saying, but I wanted to share it with him anyway. And I realized while I was sharing the whole making of the film with him that I was having my own as-you-wish moment with him. So it was, um, it was very moving for me. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was very sad, very touching. Carrie. Uh, we were talking before you came on about uh, the movie Galaxy Quest with Tim Allen, where... Okay, uh, sure. Okay, you know that. So sure. I can't remember the guy uh, or the character that he plays, but he plays basically the Spock character. Right. Um, and Alan Rickman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he is pissed that he's been in this movie, and that's all people are, you know... <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. <laughs> there has to be times... That even if you love, I mean, in that character, he didn't love it. He was really pissed that that's what he turned into be. 
But right. you've done so much. You've right. been in really critically acclaimed movies. You're a great actor. Thank you. But there has to be times that you run into fans who you're like, okay, it's a movie, dude. It's <laughs> no, a I, movie. i got to share with you this. Here's how I look at it, Glenn. I think as an actor, you're blessed to have anyone resonate with your work. You know, some actors go through life and there's, don't have a single movie that anybody's even cared to watch or, or have feel anything about. And uh, I look at it like, how blessed am I? that I have a film that has touched so many people. I call it the gift that keeps on giving. This is like a generational film. I meet families who've passed down their VHS oh, yeah, copies from grandparents to grandkids. It's just incredible. It's a, it's a rite of passage. It really is. <laughs> we, it really is. We shared it with our kids. I, I've got kids in their 20s, and I've got a you know eight-year-old. And right. it is a rite of passage that oh, we're know, watching right. this movie. It's so incredible. great. Carrie, I, I've I uh, I thank you very much for being on the program. I've never you, uh, I, I'm I've never done this before, but I would like to ask if we could send you a few of, copies of your book and you could sign them so we could give some uh, away. That's great, awesome. Carrie. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being so cool, and thank you for giving and, and uh, happy holidays to you and to all your listeners. And uh, thank you for having me on your show. God bless you. Thank you very much. You too. Name of the book is uh, As You Wish: The Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride. He was great. I have to tell you, after my experience with B.B. King, <laughs> where B.B., my wife, fell asleep at a B.B. King concert, and I am a huge B.B. King fan, and we went backstage to meet him, and he couldn't give a flying crap about me. He was hitting on Tanya, wasn't he? He was hitting on my <laughs> wife the whole time, and I wanted to say to him, she fell asleep, she <laughs> hates you. <laughs> She's, uh, she's like, stop with B.B. King all the time. And uh, and after that, and then an experience with Billy Joel and Elton John, right in the same summer, I, I swore off meeting anybody that I liked. If I liked your music, I liked your work, I don't want to meet you because it's going to be a disappointment. That was a cool interview. Yeah, he was great. That was a cool interview. Great. Fascinating. Really, really gracious guy. Really great. Let's remind you that I brought that to the table. You did. So. There's one for the last 10 There's or 15 one. years. Uh, so here to, <laughs> As You Wish is the name of the book, The Inconceivable Tales of the Making of the Princess Bride.